If you've ever had a lipid panel, then you've had your triglycerides measured, and if they were extremely high, then you may be at risk for a form of pancreatitis that we'll discuss in this video. Hypertriglyceridemia pancreatitis is caused by triglyceride levels being very high in your blood. And why would very high triglycerides cause pancreatitis? It's not that triglycerides themselves are toxic to the pancreas, rather it is their breakdown product of free fatty acids that incites the inflammation. So why do some people have elevated levels of triglycerides? Hypertriglyceridemia pancreatitis is typically occurring in people who are genetically prone to have high levels of triglycerides. On top of that, they have a second event that provokes those high triglycerides to rise even further, high enough to actually incite the pancreatitis. Uncontrolled diabetes is a second common factor to provoke pancreatitis. Another is pregnancy. In the third trimester, a woman's triglycerides rise, though they typically stay below 300, a level that is safely away that which provokes pancreatitis. But for a woman who is genetically prone to hypertriglyceridemia, she may be at risk for developing pancreatitis late in pregnancy. Mirroring the impact of female hormones on triglycerides, use of oral estrogens can cause pancreatitis in people who are already susceptible to high triglycerides. In addition to estrogen, other medications such as beta blockers, thiazide diuretics, and some HIV medications may also cause triglycerides to rise. Use of alcohol in excess of the recommended amount is also a cause of hypertriglyceridemia pancreatitis, as well as pancreatitis without triglycerides being elevated. If a triglyceride level of 300 isn't likely to cause pancreatitis, how high must triglycerides climb before it causes this condition. We know that as a person's triglycerides rise over 500, they start to have some risk, but it would take hundreds of people with triglycerides at these levels before we would see a single case. Once triglycerides climb over 1,000, this is when we typically think of a more defined risk for having pancreatitis, and once they're over 2,000, that risk becomes quite large, about 20%. Typically, triglycerides have to be above 1,000 to diagnose hypertriglyceridemia pancreatitis. But if I see a person in the emergency room who has typical pancreatitis findings and their triglycerides are 600 and there's no other obvious cause, I sort of imagine that if we had caught them a little bit earlier when their symptoms first started, they may have already been well above 1,000. And so I suspect that this person probably does have hypertriglyceridemia pancreatitis. Pancreatitis causes so much pain, nausea, and vomiting that a person stops eating, and it soon follows that their triglyceride levels decrease. Further, it's not so much the triglyceride levels, but the free fatty acids, which we can't directly measure. And so we don't know in the moment in time that they're in the ER, what were the triglycerides and their free fatty acids in the pancreas that's now inflamed. Most evidence at this time supports the idea that when we are treating hypertriglyceridemia pancreatitis, we should aim to reduce the triglycerides below 500. We kind of think of that as it's turning off the switch that's provoking the problem. And so again, if I see someone whose level is at 600, I'm gonna treat them the same as if somebody had a level of 1500. We also know that the overuse of alcohol will directly stimulate pancreatitis, and we know that alcohol will increase triglycerides. And so these two factors might also be converging in a person who's been using a lot of alcohol, but also has that genetic susceptibility to have elevated triglyceride levels. Like fire, there needs to be a fuel and a spark, and in this case, triglycerides and alcohol combine to inflame the pancreas. How are triglycerides lowered? A focus of treating any pancreatitis is to ensure that there is adequate fluid resuscitation, which we monitor by ensuring that there's adequate urine output. That also helps to dilute all of the inflammatory cytokines that are driving this process and make sure that they're flushing out of the body and that the heart, the kidneys, and the other vital organs are properly supported through this event. Hypertriglyceridemia pancreatitis has the additional goal to lower the triglycerides below that key threshold of 500, something that we achieve in the hospital with the use of insulin, which activates lipoprotein lipase that will help to break down those triglycerides into free fatty acids and glycerol, their constituent components, activate your metabolism to make good use of those, and drive your sugar levels down to a normal level. All of that helps to restore things towards normal. When triglycerides are extremely high and pancreatitis very severe, plasmapheresis is useful to directly extract triglycerides from the blood. This can lower extremely high triglycerides in the tens of thousands down into a normal level within a matter of a day or two. As symptoms subside, a patient's appetite will return, and as they start to eat, it's important that we keep a good tight control of the amount of fat in their diet. 
that actually needs to be restricted to 5%, which for a 2000 calorie diet means 10 grams of fat. That's a very small amount. And because we know that it takes a full month or two for the pancreas to fully recover, those dietary restrictions need to be maintained long after a patient has left the hospital. Well, these measures help to control triglycerides right after pancreatitis, in the long term, we're going to need to make lifestyle changes and start some new medications to ensure that we keep control of the disease. Thankfully, we can relax the 5% fat rule, but we still need to keep it to around 10 to 15%. And that means for a 2000 calorie diet, we're looking at about 30 grams of fat. Now, bear in mind, that's not just saturated fat, that is total fat. It's also important to avoid concentrated sugars. So you're not going to want to have a glazed donut. Well, you will want to have a glazed donut, but you shouldn't have a glazed donut. And you should also not have fruit juices. This is the one that people trip up on a lot because there's a lot of thought of, it's a fruit juice, it's gotta be good for you, but that is a concentrated sweet. You also wanna avoid things like cream-based soups and sauces because that's a concentrated fat. After any pancreatitis, it's recommended that alcohol use be curtailed and that tobacco be avoided. Tobacco is especially important because it is a major driver of developing pancreatic cancer. In addition to lifestyle changes, some new medications will need to be started. But it's helpful to repeat the triglycerides after there's been some dietary control because we'll sometimes find that those have lowered already. Statins are a great first-line therapy to consider because they help the entire lipid profile improve and we know that that also has great benefits for heart disease. Fibrates are another medication that more specifically lower triglycerides, but they don't have as wide reaching effects. And so that's why I usually suggest statins be the first line therapy and see what we achieve with that. Additionally, metformin is usually started to help diabetes. But even if you have prediabetes, I think this is something that's worth thinking about because metformin has the added benefit of lowering triglycerides and it has been shown to reduce the risk of pancreatic cancer, something that increases once you've had a bout of pancreatitis. If you have uncontrolled diabetes, it's very likely that you're going to need to start insulin, something that may have even been initiated back when you were in the hospital, and you'll follow up with an endocrinologist or an internist to make sure that that's calibrated correctly. Hypertriglyceridemia reflects altered lipid metabolism, which goes hand in hand with a lot of other disease. It's not uncommon that these people have a lot of gallstones, and if their gallbladder is littered with gallstones, there may be some wisdom in prophylactically removing the gallbladder to ensure that there's not a future gallstone pancreatitis. Additionally, these people can have heart disease and they can have fatty liver disease, and these things should be screened for and appropriately managed. Hypertriglyceridemia is often connected to a genetic condition, which means that your family would like to know about this so that they can get screened and take proactive measures. I hope that you found this information helpful. If you've recently been diagnosed with hypertriglyceridemia pancreatitis, or if you've had a lipid panel that shows your triglycerides are very elevated. Thank you for watching and be safe.